All right, welcome to the mix live here on location in the sanctuary. Absolutely, here Got a tree behind church. us. Tree behind us. Normally we're upstairs in the green room with a small door behind us, but today we want to get festive because Chris, this is the big week. The big week. The big What's week. What on? everyone's been waiting for. Oh, that's right. The release Star of Star Wars. Wars. Yeah. Star Wars is happening this week. So. I, I I saw somebody, one of our friends on Facebook, you know, a little profile picture of Darth Vader. So people are oh, yeah. getting ready. Yeah. I didn't I didn't see that. Yeah. I must have missed that on Facebook, so if that was you. It's one of your boys. One of my boys, yeah. huh? I got a few of those. He'll so probably I, comment. Okay, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris, I got no. Do, do you have your ticket yet for I, I do not have my Star ticket. Star Wars The Last yeah. Jedi. I will I'll be lucky if I get to the theater to see it, but Yeah. I, I'll try. Yeah, I I'll got try. you. I'm kind of this, the disgruntled sports fan this year. I love football, and all of my football teams are doing terrible this year. Mm -hmm. The Gators, we know what happened. The Bucks are already out of the playoffs. Josh is back there, or Over Easy's back there laughing at me. Uh, so I, I haven't got my ticket yet. It's because he already has going. his tickets. No, it's because Alan just got on. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Josh is a Tennessee fan, so he can't laugh at anybody. <laughs> Uh, so I've not got my ticket yet. Probably about Christmas time, we'll let the kind of the crowd die down a little bit, mm -hmm. and then we'll be able to check out what the movie's all about. All right. Well, but yeah. even even bigger than that, we're just kind of kidding. Even bigger than that, we have coming up this week a whole bunch of activities. But let's first look back this past weekend, Chris. Past a weekend. lot of stuff taking place. Yeah. Talk a little bit about because Saturday this place Saturday, was packed out. Yeah, it was packed pancakes out and pajamas. for pancakes and pajamas. Man, it was yeah. just a lot of fun. Kids seemed to really have fun. Of course. Santa and Mrs. Claus made mm -hmm. an appearance. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Um, Chris, were you yeah. Santa? I was not Santa. Okay, I just want to make sure because I didn't get a chance. To, I was kind of back in the back looking at yeah. pancakes. I didn't get a chance to see a whole lot of stuff out here. But it seemed like, man, everybody's having a good time. Yeah, everybody had a good time. Uh, Miss Tara was reading stories to the kids. So gotcha. It was just I, a lot of yeah, fun. I popped my head in real quick at that point. Right. So you were back flipping pancakes. Right? I was back flipping pancakes. That was right. I love flipping some pancakes. So we got a chance to Are be back you, there. Were you responsible for the gluten-free pancakes? No, I was only licensed to serve gluten-full pancakes. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, gluten-free. That was Michael Matthews was flipping those. He had a special license to flip those. And so for the one person that ate the gluten-free, we want to thank you for doing that because <laughs> Michael was back there all morning. Uh, making sure we had some gluten-free pancakes. All right. Well, that's good. Definitely. That's good. And we had church on Sunday. Church on good, Sunday. Good Sunday. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of neat to see some different faces up leading worship and, and having a good time. And then Sunday afternoon, I'm not allowed to talk a whole lot about what happened Sunday afternoon. If you follow me on either Facebook or on uh, Snapchat, you got a little bit of behind snap this. What? Snap what? Yeah, it's like Snapbook. It's kind of like oh, okay. Instagram for the modern day cool okay. kids. So, uh, <laughs> Is that so the one where you put the dog faces on? I do not do that. Oh, there, okay. there are a few people that do that. I don't do all the filters Is like that, that guy? and stuff. That guy right there <laughs> loves to do that stuff with his son. I don't put a lot of filters on, but I did share some behind-the-scenes footage of uh, what was happening in anticipation of something coming up a couple weeks here at Richmond right. Church. We might talk about that a little later. I it might know. come up. It, it might, might come, come up. up. Okay. Uh, All right. So yeah. we are two weeks away from Christmas. Today. Two yeah. weeks from today is Christmas. I know. Christmas. That is crazy. I now, can't believe how fast yeah. it's coming. Now, are you guys fully have your houses decorated and you're ready to go? Yes. Um we actually got some lights outside this wow, week. Wow, yeah. that's good. You know, Just... after my you know my story earlier, uh, a couple episodes ago about the Christmas lights fail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we went the lazy man's route and we got some of those little laser light things that you just stick in the <laughs> yeah, yard. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> it there's, looks there's, nice though. It's the kind kids, of like the yeah. kids are excited. That's, that's all, all, I all care that matters. It all that matters. It's kind of like the debate between real trees versus fake trees. Oh, yeah, it's like authentic lights versus the right. the twenty bucks I can light up my whole house. Exactly type thing. Now I have a mixture. I allow a little bit of that on the house, but I still do the. The traditional lights around. We did a. I, I there was like one string around the light pole, <laughs> and then we do have this very like we love. Ever since we moved in the house, we have this. Um, you know, it's little uh, Charlie Brown and Snoopy and Linus around the tree. Mm -hmm. You know, just a little light up gotcha. thing. So it's pretty cool. It's, Brown it's looking tree. a little rough these days. <laughs> I mean, it's looking really Charlie Brownish right now because um, it's we've had it for about ten years and gotcha. the sun beats it pretty bad. I gotcha. So, but I gotcha. but. It's traditional for us, so yeah. we do it. Now, over easy back there. Christmas finally. decorations? They're finally up. Don't have any outside yet. We're a young couple. We don't have all the, the fun outside stuff yet. But we have everything 
Everything we have is up and out. <laughs> There's nothing fun about outside decorations. I'm just being honest with you. I'm going to so. disagree with that. I, I don't like untangling and all, all that they're, stuff. But after they're that, fun on somebody else's house. Yes, I saw a really cool house back behind the church here that did an incredible job. I, see, I saw some come home yesterday. They decorated the backyard for their because they have lakeside. And uh, I, I want a boat just for that. Man, so. <laughs> you're going all out if you're decor decorating the back of your house. Like, just all right, so I guess we should get back to business. Huh? Real so, stuff. Real stuff right. what's happening. So, so about Christmas yeah, on Hatfield. Christmas on Hatfield, which is um, two days, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, Christmas Eve, Eve. So Saturday, uh, December 23rd at 5.30 p.m. Uh, is going to be the first service. And then uh, again on Sunday morning, which is December 24th, 9 a.m. and then 11 a.m. So the one on Saturday at 5.30, uh, we don't have any kids' services at that time. Right. Um, but bring the kids. Uh, they can come be a part of what we're doing here in the auditorium. And uh, But then on Sunday morning in the 9 and the 11 service, uh, we have kids' services going on. They're going to have, uh, in fact, Tanya was telling us this morning, you know, they're kind of finalizing a lot of the activities. Uh, so that's really cool. They're going to have a lot of fun stuff. Um, but definitely uh, be planning, figure out which one you're going to come to, uh, go to the page and let us know. If you go to our Facebook event, um, and uh, there's a link in there where you can get the tickets, we've got that link working. We've, we're having a little bit of problem, but that link definitely works. It'll take you to where you can go get your tickets mm -hmm. um, and let us know, especially when you're bringing the kids, let us know so that we can plan uh, make sure we have all the volunteers covering mm -hmm. that and everything. So, mm -hmm. And help us spread the word. We have a bunch of resources for you to be able to do that. We have uh, the, the Arctic Cups that are available still for purchase. We have posters. We have invite cards. Everything's out now. If you're volunteering starting this week, you'll be able to pick up your T-shirts and all that stuff. Everything's out now, so help us spread the word less than two well, weeks not, away. Not quite everything, right? Don't we have like a video? Oh, that's right. That's uh, right. That's about to release. I almost forgot about that one. Be watching Facebook in the next couple of days. We're going to yeah. be sharing a video, kind of promotional piece that some people here at Ridgepoint Church put together for us. Uh, really excited about that. Give me some exciting information. So once that's out there, share that. Let your friends know. By the way, uh, go to the event right now. And if you know people that you want to invite, go to the event page right now. It's open to anybody who's a part of Ridgepoint Church. Uh, click, first of all, that you're attending on that event on Christmas on Hatfield, but then you're allowed from that site to invite friends to that. So utilize Facebook to be able to do that, and we're going to share that coming this week, and we're also going to be able to share that video. Yeah, so, so just a, a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. to let people know um, that you're coming and invite mm -hmm. them and just all, all kinds of ways. So, mm -hmm. And we still have plenty of invite cards here. Uh, posters, all that stuff. If you need to get any of those things, mm -hmm. let us know, and we'll Definitely. be glad to get them to you. So, yeah, I did a quick count. I think we gave out almost fifteen hundred invite cards this weekend. Uh, just guessing by the size, and then we probably still have a couple hundred left. So, get those this weekend and help invite people out. All right. So, um, so this week we we kind of yesterday as we were um, uh, as you were kind of wrapping up the message, you kind of we went back to something that we did last year mm -hmm. and kind of promote it for some things that are going to be coming up this week. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, two things really that we want to make sure everyone's aware of. We talked about this week being light in the world around us and, and being light in the darkness as Jesus was. And just looking for practical ways to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we shared Karen's video from last year and literally every time I watched that video I got teared up all over again. Just an incredible, incredible opportunity to share God's love. And we already talked about that this coming Sunday. We're going to be taking up another offering for, for another family that is in, de is in desperate need. Uh, we're going to share their whole story this coming week at Ridgepoint. We don't want to get a lot of information out there because we don't want them to find out about what we're doing. It's someone right. not affiliated with Ridgepoint at all, uh, but just in case, we don't want videos to be shared where they might hear about it. But this coming Sunday, we'll be able to share her story and uh, be able to take up an offering and then the following week to be able to, to bless that family. So come this weekend ready, prepared to give towards that. Absolutely. But then also we said, before you get to that, in the next 24 hours, uh, find a way to just show practical love to a random stranger. Uh, so hopefully uh, people had some stories that said, man, by the time we shoot this, the mix today, right. to have some of those stories come kind of trickling in. And I had one already this morning or early this afternoon uh, that came from, from a part of, person of really intimately involved at Rich Point Church that, that shared about they just kind of keep some Chick-fil-A gift cards to be able to hand out, and, and, and no, it's not my wife, but that's a great resource to be able yeah. to do that. 
And uh, just Josh keeps them too, not to hand out though. <laughs> just, just to use them. So. That's right, Josh. Like I need to use all those Chick Fil A cards I can. Uh, but just a chance to, to share God's love, and 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 an opportunity came in a very unique situation mm -hmm. that someone was they were able to bless someone with that. And that's so cool. That's a, that's a neat way of doing it. So uh, if you have some stories that, that you've had, maybe in the comment section below. Just let us know in the last 24 hours I was able to bless this person, help this person out. We'd love to hear those stories. If maybe something you don't want to talk about publicly, email us, JJ or Chris at RidgepointChurch.org. I'd love to hear those stories about ways we're impacting our community. All right, cool. So let's talk a little bit more about yesterday. Um, you know, let's talk a little bit. You, you mentioned that we talked about the idea that, of light, that Jesus yeah. came to be light in the world. So talk to us a little bit about kind of what the big idea was and kind of unpack that a little bit more yeah. for us. Yeah, the, bi the big idea was this idea that the darker the world, mm -hmm. the brighter the light. Mm -hmm. And what we mean by that is is that we have this incredible opportunity in front of us because of uh, just how broken the world can be at times, that, that it's in the midst of that darkness that our light is, is able to shine. And, and so as I, as I was reading, I didn't get a chance to share this, which kind of ran out of time on, on Sunday morning. But at the very beginning of John, uh, John's gospel, he's talking about Jesus being the light of the world. And he says this, In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Meaning Jesus' light came into this dark world, and the darkness hasn't overcome it. In fact, as dark as it was, Jesus' light only shined brighter. And then it says um, about John being a, a small witness of the light, but that Jesus is going to come who's a true light. And it says, the true life, in verse 9, the true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. And, and so the idea is that Jesus came to be the light of men. And yet even as Jesus was here, not everyone accepted him. I know there are people who got really excited about inviting people out to church. Like, man, it's, it's difficult sometimes. It seems like people don't want to go to church at times. And, and I understand that entirely. And yet it's in this broken world that Jesus calls us to be that light uh, and reflect the light that Jesus has for us. Hmm. You know, as, as we were, um, you know, I, I knew kind of as we were preparing for this series that, uh, that we were going to be talking about this idea that Jesus came to bring light from darkness. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually, um, a couple of days ago, I was reading uh, this uh, devotional that's based on some of C.S. Lewis's writings. And in Mere Christianity, um, one of the quotes is, he says, uh, virtue, even attempted virtue, um, brings light, but indulgence brings mm. fog. And it kind of, I don't know, it just kind of hit me in, in that particular setting. He was talking about a specific virtue, but that kind of hit me because I knew we were going to talk about this idea that, that Jesus was light and that mm. he brought light into darkness. So why, why is this whole idea that Jesus brings light into darkness, mm. why is that such a big opportunity for our church? Yeah, yeah I think... Again, like I talked about yesterday, that over the last 20 years, things have gotten progressively more difficult. Right. Uh, you look at, at the anguish today worldwide, not just something happening in our country, but worldwide. It seems like our world is becoming more and more divisive than it ever has before. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes the, the church's response is, is to kind of run from culture and say, well, that's how it's going to be. We're going to kind of sit in our holy huddle and, and just influence each other. And, right. And, and really our purpose is just to, to move people from one church to another. And, and, and that shouldn't be our approach at all. Our approach genuinely should be to say, man, I know culture is dark now. Uh, I know culture is difficult and people are upset and people are divisive and all that stuff. But, but if I get a chance in the midst of that darkness to shine even brighter, mm -hmm. it gives me a, an even greater opportunity to influence the world to say, man, I know things are tough. And, and some of you right now, you have friends going through difficult circumstances and difficult times. And, and they need you now more than ever. And, and sometimes you know, I see stuff people post on social media and it seems so petty and it seems so like, like what's the purpose of that? That, that didn't do anybody any good. And there's just creating more drama. And, and it's funny, no sooner had we, I talked about this yesterday, than we left on the way to, to do this other video shoot we're doing for something coming up. And, and I ended up in a Walmart parking lot. And, and there's one of those situations where like, I'm waiting for a car and the car's going really slow. I'm like, well, if he's going to go that slow, I got plenty of time. I started to pull out. When I started to pull out, he like revved his engine and started like, like driving up real fast. Like he, and, and like right away, my initial response was to be frustrated and like want to throw my hands up in the air and say, what? Like you're the one that did this. <laughs> and and literally, as I thought about that being my reaction, I thought, man, JJ, you just talked about this. Mm -hmm. That midst of conflict be light. Mm -hmm. and, and yet, I'm not saying it's easy. It's it's, it's a challenge. Yeah, it definitely is. Definitely. Yeah. 
So, um, so let's talk a little bit about we we've, we've kind of covered the gamut of mm-hmm. Christmas stuff. Yeah. But we also got a new year coming up, too. We do. We what, do. What's that all about? Okay. A couple of things. First of all, we give everyone a chance to catch their breath after Christmas. Yeah. Uh, we have, right now, I think we have 80 volunteers signed up to serve in some capacity. Uh, we have a lot of people who said, man, I'm coming Saturday night to, to be a part of the service, and then Sunday I'll come volunteer in both services. Uh, so we know it's a really extensive volunteer uh, central stuff that we do for Christmas and, and also for the staff and the people involved. It's a lot. So we always take off the week after Christmas to, to give everyone a little bit of a break. There's gonna be, I say take off, there's going to be an online service. Uh, it's already been shot. We're really excited about that. It's going to kind of launch us into some stuff we're doing in the new year. Cool. Uh, so it happens to be New Year's Eve this year. So on December 31st, don't come here to Ridgepoint Church. Uh, if you will, if you do, you can sit in the parking lot and watch on, on your phone <laughs> online because we do have online video coming for service that coming Sunday morning. Still a chance to participate in some very specific ways, um, but it's going to be an online service, not just an online message this year, right. but an online service. Yeah, we'll post that both to Facebook and to our YouTube page yep. as well. So right. that's going to be uh, your opportunity to worship with us mm-hmm. on, um, was it New Year's Eve actually? Right. So, yeah. Yep. So, so that's what's coming up. Kind of finish out this year. Plus, Josh said, you know, the best thing about that is that you can sleep in a little bit <laughs> on New Year's Eve morning, mm-hmm. so that get ready you for get ready to stay, stay up, up till, a little bit late, stay up till yeah. midnight, and yeah, bring in, bring in the New Year eighteen, which yeah. is going to be the best year ever, by the way. All right, at least until can I quote you? Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> 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 so, uh, with all that being said, Josh, I know we covered a lot of information. Did we miss anything? No, I think you guys got it all. I was gonna say, only thing is, uh, you know, let everybody know that that this set design right here, you can take a picture of where the mix was captured at this week. That's this right. Come here and take a picture. In yeah. particular, this coming Sunday, <laughs> I want you to take pictures in this set design. Uh, there's gonna be a bench back here. Chris and I did not want to sit on the bench together. We didn't want to be that close. Uh, but this coming week, I have a chance to We're use close, this. We are close. close. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we'll be able to invite people out through that this coming week. We actually have a photographer in place this coming Sunday in preparation for that. All right. Any comments or anything we need to get to that we haven't already Questions covered? Questions that anybody had? Man, you guys, you guys uh, got it pretty pretty covered. I was saying only, only one is uh, Darth Vader did show up right after you talked about him. That's yeah, why I laughed okay. so hard. That so. was good. That was good. <laughs> good seeing Darth Vader make it to the mix. Cool. Uh, okay, well, thanks for checking us out. We'll see you this coming Sunday, 9 to 1045.